hey y'all got a couple announcements to make i'm gonna drop a video every day this week i'm starting a study in first peter first peter has five chapters so every day i'm gonna drop a video on each chapter and we'll kind of dissect it do a little preaching slash teaching slash shouting slash hallelujah good time right and I also want to say that I'm going to have my friend Blake on Friday night on a live stream. So we're going to have a live stream Friday night. I'm thinking probably 9 o'clock. Okay, so don't miss it. You know, I'm going to drop a video every day this week. We're going to be in First Peter. It's going to be a quick video. You know, just a little, a little Bible study slash teaching. Have a good time. And uh, I want to make that quick announcement that look for the video drop. And then Friday at... I'm thinking nine o'clock, my friend Blake, he'll be on here. You know, we hold each other accountable during the week. You know, we're going to do this study together. We're going to come on Friday and we're going to do an overview of the whole book of first Peter, which is only five chapters and we'll see how it goes. Right. We'll have a good time and kind of collaborate on the things that Peter is saying in his book. And, uh, it's going to be a good time. So you don't want to miss that tune in Friday at nine o'clock. All right, let's just jump right into it, all right? 1 Peter chapter 1 says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered through Pontus. Amen? And I want to bring that out tonight. You know, it says Peter is an apostle of Jesus Christ, number one, to the strangers. Okay, and I want to ask you that question tonight. How many strangers are we telling about Jesus you know, Paul went out everywhere he went. He preached Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Amen. And we don't do that. We don't go out. We don't preach Jesus Christ. We very rare ever mention his name, you know, in our everyday conversation, you know. So we need to think about that. Peter, he, he went everywhere. Everything he, he lived, breathed and talked Jesus Christ. So to the strangers. You know, it's easy to tell somebody about Jesus or bring up the conversation to somebody in church or to a to a brother that we know or or someone that we're familiar with. But to a complete stranger, instead of saying, hey, how you doing? You know, or the weather sure is nice outside. How about God? Right. So we need to put that in our conversation in our day to day lives. Verse three through five. You know, I'm, I'm just going to do kind of a quick little overview of of uh the chapter that way we can go through and hit the highlights amen and see what it's talking about it says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Hallelujah. Ready to be revealed in the last time. And I want to point that out. It's talking about mercy. It says, it says abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ you know it was by his mercy that we come to know who he is and he didn't he didn't leave us astray he didn't leave us in the miry pit he didn't leave us in that miry clay he didn't leave us in the condition that we was in it was by his mercy and his love that he brought us out amen hallelujah to the lamb of god you know it says a lively hope by the resurrection and I see that time and time again. So many churches, they're living, so many, so many Christians, they're living a life that is, is not the abundant life, number one. They're not very lively. And then when they talk about Jesus, they don't have that fire. They don't have that zeal. They don't have that emotion with it. They don't have that passionate, lively hope. You know, I, tonight I have a lively hope. I want to be alive. My God is alive. His spirit is alive. And I want to be lively through him and him through me. Amen. So we need to remember that, you know, it's, it's through his mercy, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's power in the resurrection. Hallelujah. It says that an inheritance fadeth not to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. I want you to know that you have a, a, a inheritance tonight. 
you know we talk about wills and things here you know our parents and and loved ones and people we know they leave us things behind but i'm talking about a spiritual inheritance i'm talking about an inheritance that fades not away that nothing can come and take it unless you give it up unless you forfeit it and i want you to know right now that i have an inheritance in heaven number one is jesus christ and it's all my loved ones that's gone on before it's that crown it's that robe of righteousness it's that robe of white that i'm gonna put on and be adored in hallelujah thank you jesus it says that it's it reserved in heaven for you so i want you to know that jesus has made a place for you in heaven there is a place for you hallelujah it says and this is my favorite part of these few verses right here it says kept by the power of god Tonight, I want you to know that I am kept by the power of God. The power of God in my life is ruling and it is reigning. And I want you to know that there is no other power that's greater than the power of Jesus Christ. It says all power was given unto him through the resurrection when he was exalted to sit beside the father on the throne. Hallelujah. I want you to know that there is a throne room and he's sitting on it tonight. Praise God verses six through seven says wherein ye greatly rejoice amen and what are we rejoicing in we're rejoicing in our inheritance that's kept by the power of god and we're kept by the power of god through the blood of jesus christ and through faith in him amen and that's that's something to shout about where's your shout at tonight we need to have a rejoicing we need to have a praise we need to have a song we need to have some life about us so come on come on y'all i want you to get happy tonight i want you to get fired up for what god has done you know, and then it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish, if though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that it's talking about our trials. You know, we're going to go through trials and we need to shout just as much in our trial as when we have a good day amen when we're on the mountain we need to shout when we're in the valley we need to shout when it's light we need to shout when it's dark we need to shout when it's good we need to shout when it's not good we need to rejoice in the lord for he is our strength praise god hallelujah and you know we're tried to prove our faith to god you know when you go through a temptation when you go through a trial when you go through something that's hard to prove our faith to God and to ourselves. You know, we prove our faith to the Lord. We prove ourselves. Amen. And, and we need that sometimes. We need to prove ourselves. And when we have a trial and we get the victory over those things, then that brings that brings a reward. Hallelujah. It says our trials are rewarded. Our trials are rewarded when we prove ourselves. So, you know, when you go through something, I want you to start praising God because there is going to be an outcome and the Lord is going to reward you for overcoming that sin or that transgression or that situation or whatever it is. The Lord is going to reward us for our good things that we do and the way that we act in our obedience to him. Hallelujah. All right, now let's skip over to 13 through 17. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Come on, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father who with without respect of persons judges according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear all right now i want to go over a few points right here in verses 13 through 17 it says guard your mind right so we need to guard our mind we need to be sober and hope to the end we need to guard our mind from everything that the world is trying to put in it you know whether it be through tv whether it be through people evil conversation you know we need to get away from those things any kind of music that we're listening to that's that's not bringing glory to god come on y'all just anything we need to guard our mind we need to guard our testimony hallelujah it says be sober you know, we need to be vigilant. We need to be aware of our surroundings. We need to be aware of spiritual things. And we can't do that if we don't have a, so a sober mind and hope to the end. You know, so many people, they lose their hope. 
And you don't lose your hope if you've been praising God. You get in the presence of God. Fear's got to go. Sickness got to go. Sin got to go. Nothing, nothing of that sort can live in the presence of God. Only holiness can live there. It says that obedience is better than a sacrifice, right? So we need to guard our minds. We need to live holy lives. Amen. We need to be obedient unto God. And it says that that is better than a sacrifice. Be ye holy for I am holy and watch your mouth. Come on, y'all. Pass the time. You know, when when we get our, get our lives in tune with Jesus. All right, let me ask you this. How much do you spend? How much time do you spend talking about the Lord? We talk about everything else. We talk about the weather. We talk about football. We talk about baseball. We talk about basketball, sports. We talk about everything under the sun. We talk about our jobs. Come on. We talk about this and that. And our conversation during the day has very little to do with the Lord. And I found myself doing the same thing and i want to change that i want to you know i want to i want to be about god and about his business amen his business is good and it is sure and he that winneth souls is wise and we're not winning those souls if we ain't telling nobody about jesus come on y'all amen it says past the time of your sojourning in fear past time all right, I want you to I want you to pay attention to that our pastime. What are we doing in our pastime? We Facebooking, we YouTube, come on, come on. We on TikTok and Snapchat. We doing all these things. Well, what if we treated our Bible like we did our cell phone? Come on, y'all. What if we read the word of God? What if we prayed? What if we prayed as much as we had on our screen time? Come on. We need to do better. We need to do better. We need the pastime. We need our pastime to be on fire for God and to be speaking about him and doing holy things. It says the pastime of your sojourning in fear. And that's the problem. We don't fear God. We don't fear his word. We don't fear what the Bible says. We don't fear the spirit. We don't want to grieve. We don't fear grieving the spirit. You know, old times we, we used to fear him. You know, people used to fear God and, and we're losing that here in this country today. And I want to I want to bring that back. I want to bring that back. I want to fear the Lord and I want to live for him in a way that people can see God in my life. Amen. So we need to pass our time wisely of your sojourning in fear. You know, we're sojourners here. We're, we're just passing through. Hallelujah. All right, let's jump over to verse nine, 19 and 21. All right, it says, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. It's precious. We need to act like it's precious. We need to cradle it. We need to talk about it like it's holy because it is. You know, if you've got a prized possession, you take care of that thing. You know, you, you put it in a certain place and you take care of it. And that's how we need to do God. That's how we need to do Jesus and his blood. That's how we need to do our lives. That's how we need to do our body because it is covered in the righteousness of God. In verse 21, that's a fourfold accomplishment right there. You know, it talks about believing in God through Christ. It talks about a resurrection in power. It talks about uh, God give him glory, give Jesus glory, all power unto him when he come out of the tomb, his ascension, through his ascension and his exalting. You know, we exalt the Lord because he sits in heavenly places. Come on, y'all. So it's a fourfold thing. Our faith and our hope are in Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. So right there in that one verse in 21, we have we're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. In 19 and then over in 21 we have we believe in God through Jesus it's only one way to God the Father and that's through Jesus Christ the resurrection and this is all Christianity is built on right here this is the foundations the resurrection and there's power in the resurrection and then God gave the glory to Jesus Christ because all power was given unto him when he ascended into heaven and he took his rightful place on the throne hallelujah and then our faith and our hope comes from Jesus and from his blood and from his resurrection and from the power that God has given him. Amen. As a sonship and the Messiah. Come on, y'all. 
Glory be to God. All right, verse 22, it says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. You purify yourself. You know, we always want to do, pray, Lord, do this and do that. Well, sometimes we need to take, we need to take it and do it ourselves. Seeing, you know, what are we seeing in our lives? Are we seeing the fruit? It says, seeing ye, you, seeing you. What are they seeing you do? What's your parents? What's your kids? What's your friends? What are we seeing you do as a purified person through the Spirit? Amen? It's in obeying the truth. Come on, y'all. I mean, it's simple. Obeying the truth through the Spirit. You know, the truth is what? Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth and its holiness. And Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So the Spirit leads us to Jesus. Jesus reveals the Spirit in us. Come on. He baptizes us in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 23 says, being born again. Ooh. When you're born again, your conversation is going to change. You're going to talk about God. You're going to want to see the things in your life. You're going to want to purge yourself through prayer, fasting, the word of God, through praise. We need all these things in our life. And then verse 24 and 25, the last verses of this first chapter, it talks about life. Come on. It's talking about all flesh is as grass and the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away but the word of the lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you come on y'all come on life is like a flower life or our flesh or our mortal man is like a flower of the grass like a dandelion dandelion pop up at night time you come outside you just mowed the grass there's the dandelions they're they're there and then you come back out the next day and they're gone and that's how our lives are here as a mortal man as a flesh, you know, it doesn't last. It's it's not eternal. It, it's here today and gone tomorrow. But the word of the Lord is here and it endureth forever. It is eternal. And when you put the word of God in you and you become immortal through the power of God kept under Jesus Christ through the precious blood of the Lamb, through Jesus Christ who takes us into the Father. Come on, y'all. This is a powerful scripture. I hope you enjoyed this, and, and this is it's so powerful. We need to get in here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to purify my soul. I want to praise Him. I want to preach to the strangers. Come on, y'all. I want to do what I need to do. I would need to rejoice in the Lord and be glad in it, for He has done some great things. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for chapter 1 of First Peter. Look for chapter 2 tomorrow. I'm going to drop a video. It's getting dark out here. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good night and God bless. God is faithful.